I attempted a seven day challenge to create one new level for my game every day for a week. Now here's something you may or may not know about me. I'm a really good programmer. Code is my natural domain. Let me implement some gameplay logic using my choice of data structures and I'll manifest a plethora of great scripts that work flawlessly. But when it comes to art, design, marketing, sound, animation, and basically every other game dev discipline, I find myself lacking. So, I came up with a challenge to test my resolve and to force myself to create a lot of levels in a relatively short amount of time. Here's how it worked. I wanted to create one level every day for seven days. That would force me to not drag my feet trying to perfect a single level, and it would allow me to get some repetition in the level design process. And I started with a mini challenge first. I set a timer for 60 seconds, and I had to come up with a very rough sketch of nine different level layouts in that time. I didn't want to think too much about it, I just wanted to let my mind start to work. So let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Suddenly my mind and body jolted into motion. My hand could hardly keep up with my brain as I began to outline some of the best level designs I had ever seen. It felt more like tracing lines that were already on the board, like my subconscious was just filling in the gaps. I felt weightless. There was no stopping me. No matter what, I was going to finish these nine quick level sketches in just 60 seconds. There's nothing that could stand in my way. There's nothing that- Well, Wow, these suck. Okay. First order of business here is to flesh out my first level idea a little more. So I brought my whiteboard sketch into Photoshop and began sketching a little more detail onto the canvas. The main idea with this level was a giant wheel structure in the middle that rotates. Honestly guys, I swear I came up with this idea completely on my own. Pretty genius, right? Okay, that looks pretty good, and I think that's enough preparation. Let's get this bad boy built in Unity. So I threw open Unity and started whiteboxing the level. It was much faster than other levels I've created in the past because I already knew what the final structure should look like. So I got the main layout finished, gave it some color, and made sure that the wheel in the center turned like I wanted. Okay, things are looking pretty good. Good, but not great. So I decided to spend a little more time adding some shapes to convey a little more detail, and here's the final result. Looks really good, actually. And that was the end of day one. All right, so let's do this again. Check out my whiteboard drawing. Beautiful, isn't it? Now let's throw it into Photoshop and let me overlay some crazy art skills and bam. Now let's jump back into Unity. So this level is fun because I wanted the players to have to traverse over narrow bridges. I wanted everyone to take extra care not to fall into the water while having to dodge bullets and chase down foes. But I didn't want the whole level to be bridges and small platforms, so I made some big pieces of land that players can move towards as well. I'm using an orthographic camera perspective and it makes it kind of hard to use your depth perception to tell how far the water is from the platforms, so I tried to angle the light in a way that the shadows were clearly visible on the water to help a little bit with that. Yeah, we'll have to see how this feels when playtesting. I don't want players to feel too claustrophobic, so I may add or remove some platforms later on. And bam, just like that, we have level number two in the books. All right, here we are on day three. This seven day challenge is actually a lot of fun. I like to gamify my development process, and this is a cool way to do that. It's a great way to motivate me to keep working on stuff and have a little fun with it. Let me know if you have some fun ideas for challenges I could do in the future. Okay. This third level is actually one of my favorites. I wanted a bit more interactivity with my levels, so I had this idea of having two big forts with drawbridges that can only be opened by pressing these big red buttons. I think this will be pretty fun and give the level some dynamism that will keep players from trying to get trapped, but also seek the shelter that these walls provide. Okay, there we go. So if we give this a try and push this button, um, nothing's happening. Ah, there we go, first try. The way I set this up is actually pretty interesting. I made a script called Triggerable, and it implements this method called Handle Triggered. So I can let any script inherit from this and override what the functionality should be when this certain object is triggered. In this case, it's the gate. Then I can just drag that Triggerable reference to one of these buttons, and it automatically invokes it when we press the button. Fun stuff. This level was another one that looked just okay at the end, but then it looked way better when I gave it a little more love on a second pass with more detail. Okay, so here we are on day four, and I'll admit that this one was a little lackluster. 
I tried to make it a bit more interesting in my Photoshop sketch, but then I realized that having a tunnel isn't great for level design because people wouldn't be able to see where they were or if someone was hiding in there, so I decided to leave it out. I do think it was a good idea to put all the coins spawning in the middle of the level, however. Then it's like this tantalizing cornucopia of reward for the player if they abandon cover to go collect coins. And if you're not familiar with how coins work in this game, they're going to be used to buy upgrades in between rounds. So it might be worth getting yourself killed in one round if you're able to pick up a few coins and spend it to buy better upgrades before the next round starts. And the way I define where coins should spawn, and where players spawn, is just by having objects that represent those locations in the scene. So if I turn on the mesh renderers for the coin spawn locations, you can see where the coins will spawn. And that makes it really easy to visualize where everything is at. But yeah, this level kinda sucks. Okay, this challenge is now halfway over and I'm feeling pretty good. I've gotten into a good groove and I'm pretty excited for this next level. It's basically a simplified plateau built into a cliffside with a big old round chunk cut out of it. And that's a shape that I can't create out of the primitive shapes within Unity, so I had to create the 3D model myself and open up my good pal Blender. <laughs> So once I finished struggling to remember how Blender works, I finally had this cube with a rounded shape cut out of it. So I threw that into Unity and got to work. I used a lot of the same materials and block designs from my first level with the wheel so that this location seems cohesive with the biome of the first level. I put in some obstacles in there, made some terraced ledges in front, and I think it ended up as a pretty visually interesting level. Alright, enough messing around with trees, water, and grass, let's get into the stuff that real video games are made out of. You know, you're not making a real video game unless you have lava. Can't you tell this is supposed to be lava? Come on guys, keep up. Okay, so for a lava level, we'll need some dark gray volcanic rock, some lava that you can fall into, of course, some big blocky pillars, a dark red glow, and some rock outcroppings within the lava. Good stuff, good stuff. But again, I don't want my levels to be totally static. So to add movement to the level, I want bridges that move in a circle to connect the different platforms. So if you check this out, you'll see them revolving around. So you have to be an opportunist when you have a chance to move to the next platform. Well done, that's a pretty good lava level for now. Well, here we are, the final day of the challenge. To be honest, it hasn't been that challenging so far, but I am running short on time today. Luckily, I have six levels that I can use as a starting point, so I'm gonna use these structures from the castle for this level and cheat a little bit. Now I can reuse this stuff to split this level in half, which I think will add a good amount of fun where each side has access to a gates button and you can circle around to face your opponents. Man, I guess that's a huge takeaway about level design from all this. Variety is your friend, but reusing assets makes level iteration super fast. Thomas Stewart. Alright, well, if you want to dive more into the world of game development and you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one.